Hello everyone, it's Zola and I am back. Woo! It has been a while and hopefully this is the start of a new era. I'm here to introduce uh, a short four series, uh, four part series of videos that I'm going to be doing which will be introductions to After Effects, Illustrator, Photoshop and Cinema 4D. Now these videos are going to be about half an hour long or so and they're going to be for complete beginners, people who have not used the programs before. If you have used the program for more than, I'd say, five hours, not for you. This is for people who have may maybe just downloaded a trial and just want to start learning the programs. Because uh, for a lot of the tutorials I've done already, people are saying, well, that's nice, but, you know, I'm a total beginner and that's fine. Everyone's a beginner when they first start. And hopefully we're gonna get everyone to the point where they can follow the tutorials along at least okay so why would you want to watch this video over the kind of learning courses that are available well a you don't have to pay so you know bonus and um, yeah also I'm gonna make it like I said half an hour you don't want to be sitting through 10 hour 20 hour courses of videos teaching you stuff you don't need to know and confusing you I'm gonna try and get you up and running in this program in half an hour so that's the aim. Like I said, if you have got experience, this is probably going to be more patronizing to you than anything else. And you know, you might watch it and feel that you, you have to send me a strongly worded email because you are just so patronized that, you know, you felt pushed to that to that extreme limit. So nobody wants that. So, you know, don't watch it. <laughs> but if you're here to learn, then let's get going. Okay, so this is the After Effects interface. And um, I'm I'm also reading from a sheet. I have a little sheet here, <laughs> which is cute, um, of stuff that I don't want to miss out. So if you ever hear me pausing, it's probably me reading a sheet. Okay. Um, this is what the standard work work uh, work area looks like when you open a program. If you don't have the program, go to Adobe.com. You can download a 30-day trial of the latest version, CS5, After Effects, and after which, after a month. If you decide you like it and you want to carry on with it, you can buy the program. And it's a little expensive, but you pay for what you get. And this is a quality program and is used in the industry as standard. Okay, so I have imported, and I'll show you how to do this later, a video. Let's double click this, press spacebar. Just a kind of abstract render I did, loosely based on the BBC kind of style. Nothing much more to say about that. Uh, an audio file, double click this. If I press dot on the number pad. Wow, where have I heard that before? Okay, and I have a picture, which is a piece of artwork I did um, quite a while ago, but got uh, pretty good reviews and uh, I got daily deviation for it on DeviantArt, which is awesome. Okay, so let me just explain what we're working with here. Down up here we have the project window and this is where all your files that you import will uh, sit. This area can get pretty crowded so it's important to keep it organized. Um, at the moment I have three files here. You can also make by clicking here new folders. Call them anything. And then you can put your various things in the folders so as to save space and you know that's I'm gonna bring these back out now and click on the trash can delete that folder but you can uh, house things in folders here you have the effect controls which applies to the effects that you add to your media down on the timeline which we'll explain later it's blank now obviously because we haven't done anything composition once again is where you will see your video or whatever you're working on. So once again, we haven't set that up yet, so don't expect it to be blank. And down here we have the default timeline, and you will not have a render queue probably. So I'm going to hide that for now. Over here you have the info, which is just the color and whereabouts on the screen you are. Audio, which will play the audio levels. Again, not very interesting. Time controls, which is important. We'll get to that later. And an effects and presets, which basically is the easy way to access all the effects which are up here in this menu and you may have more or less effects than me I have a lot of trials on here at the moment uh, 
for kind of plugins that I'm trying out and I may think about buying uh, either usually at work what we do at work is we download the trial version if we can convince the boss to buy it because we need it and it will improve us then that's what we go and do so a lot of these are trials don't worry about that I will not be going into anything that involves third party, third party plugins so don't worry okay uh, let's get started okay so the first thing you'll want to do is import footage whether that be video pictures music you can right click in here go to import file and it will come up you know with on PC this will look different on Mac you find the file you want to bring in you can bring in multiple files at once by com command or control clicking and you know bring it in that's fine that's fairly self-explanatory really I've imported an mp3 like I said a picture once you have your media in you see this as if I was to call this a metaphor I'd say this is like buying paint and now you want to make a canvas on which you can paint in this case the canvas would be like the video so what you do have to do is make this canvas so you go to composition at the top new composition now this is what will define how long your video is how wide it is and all the rest of it we have presets here if you know what you're working with like raw footage from a camera or you have captured footage like 720p HD 25 frames a second 29 uh, I'm gonna leave it on HD for now uh, the width and height of your video in pixels which is uh, how wide or height is aspect ratio you will be leaving this at square pixels I would not touch that unless you are going into broadcast in which case you know you might be going into the anamorphic and such but leave that at square pixels frame rate this will be if you're in Europe usually 25 if you're in America 29.97 uh, but don't worry about that and resolution this is uh, leave this at full uh, start and end so this is how long your composition will be obviously usually you want to start at zero seconds and at the moment this is going to be 10 seconds long if I click OK can you see we now have composition now if I zoom out command minus or you can if you have a, a mouse with a scroll button you can scroll and we're now displaying this at 50% of its size if we press 100 this is how wide the video will be but I'm gonna work at 50 just for the sake of um, screen space okay so we've now made a composition we can make another one as you can see the composition is now represented here by this film strip and it's another thing that's been added to our project you can make another one you know do it again and I could keep doing this if I wanted to can you see I've just made four compositions and they all reside here on the timeline in different tabs and then you can switch between these and nest them into each other and so forth but I don't want to confuse you so we are going to just be working with one composition for this and I'm going to delete all those that I will not be needing blah 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 okay so we're in composition one which is at the moment 10 seconds long as you can see along here now uh, I can on the top of this timeline it's showing in seconds if you command click over here or control click on PC you can change this to frames so this the time will be displayed in frames and uh, frames and seconds so I'm gonna leave it on time uh, now as you can see nothing's happening here because we haven't brought any footage in so I'm gonna bring this video down here in fact before I do this uh, I'm gonna show you something say for example I bring this picture in and this picture is far too big for this composition and this might be a problem you are getting with video because when you go to create the composition you have no idea how wide it needs to be and how long you're going to want it so what you will usually be doing is working from a raw video that you have already in which case the best method is to drag this down onto the film strip now if you drag it onto the film strip now we have created a composition just like we would do by going in here 
but the kicker is that the composition is automatically the right length exactly the same length as the video you use to make it the right frame rate so this video will play smoothly and um, also the right width and resolution so you're not going to have any cropping you know you're not going to see any dark edges it's going to be perfect so that is usually what I will do if I want to uh, start a composition just drag usually all your footage is going to be the same size so just drag any one of the clips in here and then what you can do to edit this composition because obviously I, I might want to make this maybe one minute long so go to composition but now go to composition settings which lets you edit the settings of the composition you are already in and as you can see this is at the moment five seconds which is represented here this is 1280 720 which is HD uh, and I'm going to change this to maybe 35 seconds okay now nothing much appears to have changed but if we come down to the bottom of the timeline and move this slider to the left we will see that basically this slider if you move it to the right you will be zoomed in as far as you can go can you see here we're viewing things at a, a tiny very very s kind of precise view and if you drag this to the left you will see your whole composition represented along the timeline which is useful if you want to have a nice overview of what you're doing but when you want to get more complex just zoom in okay if you've ever used a video program I'm pretty sure you'll have used something similar to that okay so I am now going to bring this picture in and uh, this piece of audio as you can see they're all represented by different colors that's fine uh, the colors don't mean anything you can change this in preferences go to preferences and I think it's label colors uh, it's just so you can d differentiate if you go here you can even change the color on the flight if you want to mark like all your pictures or stuff you're not going to use or whatever you can do it there I'm gonna just run real quick through these uh, what these mean the eyeball means that if I click on the eye that layer will become invisible if I click the eye on then you can see it again and uh, this is the same for the sound now these two video layers have no sound this is a picture so obviously it has no sound that has a video with no sound but down here as you can see we have an audio layer which has no video but has sound so just be aware of that uh, this is the solo button lets you kind of basically if you have a composition of many many layers and you just want to work on one piece of video for, for a while you just click this and now the only thing that will become visible in your composition window is that now this is probably not the best example because I don't have many layers but if you want to isolate one layer and just work on one layer just use that the lock button makes these uneditable I cannot edit those until I take the lock off now what we're going to be getting into is the transform if you twirl this little arrow down uh, I'm not going to use the transform for that but I'm going to show you can you see uh, the video layer has basic properties anchor point position scale rotation opacity I'm going to explain real quick what these are uh, anchor point we can go through later position if I move this number left or right is what position is in relation to the composition if I command the control Z is undo so it's going to go back to the top and I can move it up and down scale obviously how big it is up down up down as you zoom in obviously you lose quality and as you lose, uh, move down it becomes smaller rotation fairly simple rotation of the video and opacity which is how translucent the actual um, file is at zero it will be completely invisible and at 100 it will be completely opaque and you'll be able to see everything now one quick thing I'm going to explain is if you have a video and say a picture um, which one is going to be visible the way the timeline works is 